You got to face where you quit. You got to face where Lazarus died. You got to face opposition. And you got to say to opposition, I'm on all the smoke. Sometimes we give up on school. Sometimes we give up on people. Sometimes we give up on church. Sometimes we give up on God. And sometimes we give up on ourselves. And we don't even know that we gave up on Because when you give up on yourself, guess what? You can still go to work. When you give up on yourself, guess what? You can still be in a relationship. When you give up on yourself, guess what? You can still get money. Quit everything except for you. Nothing's wrong with failure. Nothing's wrong with failure. What is wrong with us is quitting. Look at somebody and say, don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. Okay, I'm going to try my best. What did I say, Luke? No, I didn't. He said, don't roll the tape. He said, don't roll the tape. Who said that, roll the tape? Amen. I said Luke 21 and 26. Yes, sir. Okay, let me get this right here. I won't be before you long. Don't quit, okay? Let's do it for 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Did y'all see that already? Yeah. When did you see it? I don't think the world recognizes the signs, the astro, uh, what is it, astrological signs. When the eclipse came, when the eclipse came, yes. devil, I want the smoke now. <laughs> Bring it. You don't want me to talk? Bring it. When the eclipse came, what is considered a natural phenom was a supernatural display of the theophany of God. And what is a theophany? A theophany is when you see God acts through nature and different things. It is called a theophany. It's when you can see God move in science. When you can see him moving in the stars and in the sun and in the moon because religious people tell you God is not in science. They'll tell you stay away from learning astrology and things of that nature. Don't look to the stars. Who told us that? Because that's the way that the wise men found Jesus. He said that there were signs in the heavens. And when the sun, the moon, and they interlocked, not many, you're talking about centuries and centuries and centuries and maybe uh, eons ago to where the sun and the moon came together. And if you didn't listen to God, there was like this leaping in your spirit, man, like something is getting ready to happen. And so what does the government do? They hand you some shades, didn't they? Uh -huh. That's what they right. yeah. And not knowing that that was an intergalactical portal. The sign of the end of the age. When the rapture takes place, and I know people are not thinking of rapture, they're thinking of my next gig, my next uh, promotion, my next opportunity, my next this, my next that. They don't know that we're at the end of the age. Things are telling you other than preachers. Because we, 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 we condense God and we box God in to what this man or woman says on Sunday. Yeah. And we're not knowing that nature is testifying yeah. what we need to hear. We just don't have an ear. Right. Notice the church is not saying what needed to be said in order to, for us to move in position. Right. We're, living, we're not living in fear of being left behind. You know what? We're living in fear of not being famous yeah. and not being discovered. And not getting more commas than all of my drama. Oh, right. teach us. But I come to tell you that the house that you will live in after this life does not compare to any house that will be built by man. John 14 says, Beloved, 
Believe on me, as scripture said. In my father's house, there are many mansions. He said, I go to prepare you a place. Listen to this. This is an emphatic truth. He said, if it were not so, I would not have told you. Because God said in his word, hope deferred, make the heart sick. That means if you tell me something and don't do it, I become emotionally sick. Because I'm expecting you to heal. I'm expecting you to move. I'm expecting you to do this. And you don't do it. Then what happens to me? Come on now, teach, Pastor. Teach. He is not a God that he would lie. Come on now. No son of man. Come on. So the, the planets lined up. Read it again. Somebody read it. Read it right quick. Right? 25. Okay. Upon the earth, there'll be signs in the moon and stars. Watch this now. Somebody shout eschatology. Eschatology. This room, this side of the room, y'all don't know what's going on. Y'all like y'all, what happened? <laughs> what's going on here? Somebody tell me. Up in here. Up in here. What's going on? Somebody shout eschatology. Eschatology. Esch means the end. The study of a, the end of the age. Ology. The end of an age. The studying of the end of an age. People are wondering when, when is the end of an age? When is it over? The disciples wanted to know because Jesus seemed to be prophetically preaching and prophetically teaching the word of God through scripture and the old scroll and the, coming out of the Old Testament and he's breathing into them rhema and giving them a revelation for future things. But one of the disciples are inquisitive and it happens to be Luke and Peter who are inquisitive disciples because Luke is a physician. Luke, you cannot just say anything to Luke and he believe it. I need definition. I need definition. Not only definition, but I need description. How many of you, how many of you sometimes people tell you something? Man, for real. Show me that. Prove it to me. And that's what Luke is. And that's why you see Luke. Jesus talking about, I'm going to I'm come back and I'm going to do all this stuff. Here. And I got the rapture. All this stuff is going to happen. The confidence coming in. Luke says, wait, 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 wait a minute. Because men, some women, you can't talk to them out of their underwear. Uh -oh. Some will ask you, do you have a good credit score? And what kind of car you drive? And do you still live at home with your mama? Yes. And they come out right. Your mama. <laughs> women, some men ain't gonna let you get in their wallet. Pay my bills. Get my hair done. Get my nail done. They wanna ask questions. What did the last man do to you? Because I'm not paying for it. Uh, 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 are you emotionally stable? How many loops we got in the house? Come on. Come on now. You need to be inquisitive and ask questions. There's nothing wrong with you asking the What in the hell and cheese is this? Explain this to me. I need details, I need description, and also I need you to define where I am. Because if you can't define where I am, I am going to listen to every voice and I'm going to be confused. And we are living in the age to where more saints are confused about who they are, where they're going, and what they can have. That is not even funny even anymore. Come on, teach now. So Luke says, tell us about the end of the age. Tell us what's going on. This is what Jesus started to say. Verse 25. And then 26. He says, man's hearts fell in them for fear. Uh oh. Man's heart fell in them. Now, if you if you read that, what's the first thing you think? Heart attack. You're gonna get afraid. Boom, heart gonna pop. I'm dead. <laughs> you know. Just when you get terrorized, boom, 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 and I die. But if, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, Fred would say, uh-oh, uh-oh, you know. I like the part when he say, uh-oh, you know what I'm Look at somebody say, it's not the big one. A heart in its etymology means suki. Sushi, psyche, psychosis, mind. 
Your heart is not this flesh, this blood organ that's pumping blood through your veins and your body. That's not what the meaning of heart is. In, in the Greek, they spoke in so many different parabolistic ways and manners and codes and inscriptive and, and with, 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 with words. It could say one thing, but have like five different meanings. And if you wasn't knowledgeable of what they were talking about, you would be lost in the conversation. Y'all, anybody know what pig Latin is? Yes. Who can pay Andrew Ray? Andrew Ray, what's the record? You take the first word, do the thing, and do it, and then it's done. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a different meaning right here. He said, men's mind will fail them. Say that with me. Men's mind will begin to fail them. And here is the interesting detail of men's mind failing them. Because when a man's mind no longer dictates or navigates his destiny and purpose, someone else begins to drive and navigate it for him. Henceforth, your government steps in and starts programming you with a paradigm. Uh -oh. Because they don't want you to think for yourself. Come on now. Because the fear is the photo opposite of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. An invisible force that I see. Right. Sounds oxymoronic, don't it? Like jumbo shrimp. That's right. <laughs> jumbo shrimp. Yeah. I've been a shrimp be jumbo. Right. Mm. This is an oxymoron. It means to see it means I don't have the ability to see something I saw. Go sense. figure. It makes sense. Come on. Go figure. So when fear steps in, we don't know whether we should wear a mask all the way. We don't know how to wear it because we some put it on our nose. So we get that, that last little bit of air right up in there. That good air. You know what I mean? When you put that thing on there, they get the whole thing. You feel like, like you about to choke in front of the mask. So you put it right up in there, and then the people that be saying, wear your mask properly, you'll see them out there have that little thing right there trying to talk to you. <laughs> now we're decorating our masks. At first it was a fear and a phobia. Now we're acclimating and acquiescing to the fear we're decorating. We're getting, the, you know, we're, 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 we're adjusting to the climate of where we are. Now we don't know because they're getting ready to shut things down again. We don't know what to do. Fear is causing man's mind to fail them. Fear is causing man's mind to fail them. You didn't come to church today because it was something good to do or somebody invited you except for BB and his brother. Chris, you came to church because you wanted to hear from God. You need instructions for the next level, okay? All right, let's, let's move. Let's move because I've got a couple minutes and I'm done. Let's finish this up. It said, man's heart fell in them and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Notice the powers, the, the dimensions of the heavens shall be shaken. It shall be shaken. Do you understand what that means? Shaken. It would be hard to get a prayer through. It will be hard for what you dream about. Some of you in here are losing like, you know, confidence in doing things like futuristic things because it's uncertain. You don't know what the economy gonna be. You don't know what your, your children ain't even in school. Come on here. They behind a, a, a computer thing and they get right. adjusted. Right. You don't know what to do. You wanna buy a house, you wanna go to school. You don't know, you don't know what kind of life you got because folk are dropping like flies. Right. And some of you don't even care. You're just going through life, taking every blow as it comes. And we're going to talk about that a little later. But the things that are coming up on the earth, the heavens are shaking now. It's not that God is nervous. It's just God is removing everything that's not like him. He, you think that God is up there thinking, uh-oh, the devil got them. They, they dick, there's nothing in. You losing your life, there's nothing in. It's only the beginning. People dying of COVID every day, and I RIP. Pray for this one. Pray for.
for that one. And I'm not belittling that. I'm not this like, you know, <clears throat> making light of that. But at the end of the day, you got to understand that you're going to die. It's not when you die, but it's how you die. You're going to leave. And this is an infound message for somebody in here who think they're invincible. God told me that at an early age. I had just got married, and I thought I was Mr. Bob Fix-It. And there was a fan. I was uh, getting the, uh, the light switch out of it, the bulb, the bulb out of it. Matthew, I was getting that bulb out of that, and it broke. It broke on the, uh, you know how the bulb... I found out later that you had to ball some paper towel and stick it up in there and turn it. I stuck my finger in there. I thought I had, you know, all my faculties together. Needless to say, I had to go and take a shower. That was a rude awakening that don't touch you. I don't know why I was going with that, but it's going to be good. I'm not invincible. I thought I could run through, shoot, leap over walls. I thought I could. Da, 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 da. You go learn today. You are just mortal beings. You're not Captain Sabo. <laughs> Y'all don't like my talking to you. But nonetheless, every project, brother, is not yours. You did break us, so don't try to fix her. Come on, oh! Hey! fixing these women. And you're not Wonder Woman either, lady. Uh oh. Get him told. Sister Saber Pimp. <laughs> you know, he, he's Jack, you know. Oh, he's just, just, he don't got so much potential now. I can work with him. What what was that finger all about that y'all be doing? So, I just need to know what that what that meant. Yeah, you know, all that. <laughs> Y'all don't graduate, y'all don't even do that anymore. Y'all don't do that. But the finger, you know, and that grab it, that red turn, all that stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, if you're not going with the finger, you know, man. I don't know why I'm going with all that, but it's gonna be good. <laughs> In other words, you're immortals with an assignment. Give me. You're going to die one day. Can't save, save everybody. You can do it. Amen? Amen. All right, now let's run to uh, Galatians 6 and 9. Look at somebody say, don't quit. Don't quit. I don't hear nothing on this side for some reason. Hey, come on. Don't say it. Don't. There it is. Come on. Don't quit. Chris, don't quit. Don't quit. Yeah. <laughs> They're like radio. Don't quit. Don't quit. Thank you, Bob. Will you get it? Somebody with a loud voice, read it for me. I'm gonna move on. Six and nine. Yeah. And let us not be weary in well doing. And let us not be weary in well doing. Notice the plurality of the scripture. It said us, and speak to let me. It means we're gonna get weary with other Christians. Come on. We're going to get real with other saints. Because we're going to discover when the pressure hits up us, we wasn't saints, we were just ants. Pressure, pressure does one or two things. It's going to create diamonds or it's going to burst pipes. You know what, I mean? what are you in this of pressure? If you burst, then guess what? You have no value at all. So the test is upon us to love each other. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that, that, that there will be a mark of the beast, a mark of the beast, and that mark will be 666, the number of man. And when you look up that word mark, it does not mean like a tattoo. Somebody's like, you know, they, they got the movies out to where men and women stand in line and they die to death because 
they wouldn't deny Christ and they wouldn't take the mark. And so they put them up on the guillotine, cut their heads off, or open up the you know guns, shoot them with uh, down with, with machine guns. Yeah, and they said the microchip now. Yeah. Put the microchip in. And then, you know what? <clears throat> Satan is too sh shrewd and too cunning, crafty, and trick. He's he, he's too he got too much trick in him yeah. to let you see it. Yeah. And have a choice in whether you want it or not. Yeah. Right. Because some of us, if we saw it, we know what it was and we'll say, no, no. I'm, I ain't going to hell. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to take that and seal my faith and go to hell. I read that, I at least read that in the Bible, devil. <laughs> you ain't going to get somebody, but you ain't going to get me. I ain't going to take no 666. I ain't going to do none of that. I ain't going to be throwing up no okays or, you know, 666. I ain't doing none of that. But the word mark does not merely mean to write upon, to etch. It doesn't just mean that. The word mark means characteristic, manner, trait, behavior. <laughs> Ooh -wee. We talked about in our meeting, there are certain fraternities and certain uh, uh, organization that people are in that when they like carpenters and plumbers and, and people that are in those fraternities and organizations, what they do is they leave their fingerprint on their work so you know who did it. When you work on something you you know, okay, this person done that because why? You can tell by the way they they did it that yeah. or yeah. done it, that speaks to them. Yeah. That's their mark. Yeah. 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 God and the devil have marked. The Bible says that God in the last days will put his seal upon the saints. And that when it was time for them to be exposed to the enemy, they will be covered by the seal. And I guess, I guess you go to the apostolic church and they're going to tell you what the seal is. What is the seal, mother? The seal being filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> And a mighty burning fire. Pray by strength in the Lord. You got to have a That's the seal. But the seal of God, he tells the disciples in the gospel, he says to them that you will know my disciples, one from the other, when they show love one to another. When I can show you love when you hurt me. Come on now. When I can show you love when you talk about me like a tall. And when I can show you love. I have the seal of God upon me. Yeah. Feel about me. Come on now. But when I show hatred, malice, Come on now. and I do come and I, I spread discord and confusion and backbiting, and backstabbing, and, and, and just talk about you. Come on now. Not know that that is the seal and the mark of the beast. Teach. Oh my God, Teach. when God leaves a place, I said when he leaves a place, on, you will know God was there. Yeah. Right. Only Jacob said when he came to Bethel, he said the Lord was here and I knew it not because he couldn't interpret the move of God. Right. He couldn't discern the move of God because he had the seal of the trickster on him. Come on now. Yes, yes. yes. So when God steps into place, guess what? After he's gone, he's left the building, he leaves it, and he lets you know the glory was there. Come on out. There's absolutely no way you can be in the presence of God and stay the same. Amen. No way. No way. I'm hearing up to it. When also, when the enemy leaves, you will see his residue. What do people say when you leave the room? What do what, what do what do what do they say? What do they say when you leave? Do 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 what 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 are they saying about you when you leave a church? When you leave a job? When you leave places? What do they say? What do they say? Tell me. I know you think everybody's talking good about you, don't you? Huh? You you hope that. 
where they say, man, he came up in the church and he was all in his flesh. Yeah. Oh. Yep. You got the seal of the beast. The Bible says he that is uh, that uh, a talebearer revealeth all secrets, but he that's of a faithful spirit will conceal the matter. We call you fringe, busted. You can't hold nothing. You can't hold water, milk, no secrets, no nothing. You can't hold it. Somebody confide in you something, guess what? But we call you news channels sell me something. <laughs> 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 Those of you who watch movies call that. I call it. You tell everything. So after after you've gone from a place, what characteristics do they recognize? They let you know who you serve. Because you could be in a church and it don't matter if you leave that church or leave that place and you leave it with the fragrance of sin. Come on now. Wow. That's why God will say in the last days, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I know not. But the Bible says, be weary and well doing. Ye shall reap if you faint not. Galatians 6 and 9. Put that on your refrigerator this week. Put that in your car. Write that on your mirror. Say, don't quit. I don't care who's against you, who's for you. It don't matter in the season. You need to make sure you're okay. You need to make sure you're all right. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with being selfish. Thinking about you and getting yourself together. You hear me? Nothing wrong with it. But there's something wrong with being self-centered. Everything about you. Everything is about you. You're trying to make sure your children okay, but you're not. You're going to create generational dysfunction. Pastor Reggie, you're trying to make sure the church is okay and you're not. You're going to create a culture of poverty and dysfunction. You've got to be okay. Yep. You've got to be okay. And can I tell you, I'm going to take the mystique off of it. The mystery off of it. And strip you of your pride. Mm -hmm. It's okay not to be alright. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You being strong. And you won't admit the fact that you're wounded. Yep. I love Jesus. Oh, God. Hey, give me that chord. Just one. I love you, Jesus. Just one. I ain't going to sing it. Just... This is what the scripture said he was wounded for my transgression. I could see him with the cross. Now, he didn't carry the cross and, and take the beating afterwards. He took the beating before. Wounded and all took the beating. And even though he's bleeding with everything within him and he don't understand, he don't, he's confused and, and he said, Lord, I've done good to them. I, I treated them right. I created them and they're turning their back on me. But he kept holding that cross. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can't quit. I know you're losing life. You're leaking. Yes, you are. You're leaking. You don't understand. You're trying to figure it out. But you're losing life and you can't quit. Keep going. You're going to reap if you faint not. You're going to reap if you faint not. You're going to reap if you faint not. You've always been taught that you heal people got to heal people. Hurt people hurt people. We've always been taught that, that hurting people hurt people and heal people heal people. Jesus does it so different. His humanity and his wound. The pain and the shame, the open, everything was open. Not only was his wound open and his insides were exposed and people could see the God of the universe now taking a beating. He's taking a beating. He's taking a blow and he's up on the cross. And, and listen, Hollywood gives it a little ephod they put around him and you know they tied together so but Jesus was on that cross and he was butt naked with everything people could see all of his humanity 
He was exposed to everything. And there's nothing like that. There's nothing like that here, Bradley. There's nothing. I don't care what you say. Some of us can go through pain. Yes, we can. We can deal with pain. We can bear it. Yes, we can. But when you got shame tied to pain, he is the God of the universe. He's supposed to defend himself. He's supposed to, you know, he's supposed to, if, if there was a, a, my God, if there was a, 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 a lightning bolt and I was gone, I would have said, shh, shh, shh. I would have, I would have blew up everything out there. I would have said, uh-uh, I ain't taking this. But maybe the cause is much bigger than what you think. But you just got to endure that pain. You gotta endure that shame. You gotta endure it. You gotta endure it. Look at somebody say, don't quit. Don't quit, don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. Luke 5, 111, keep the mix going, I'm, I'm done. Luke 5, 111. Lift those hands right quick like in this crust. Five and eleven. It said there were two ships. Read it on the seaside, and the men were gone out of them, and they were washing them there. Two ships at the seaside, and the men were gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. such a minute point and a small revelation there. But revelatory knowledge is in the small things of God. Big things are in the small things of God. In the small things of God. Two ships by one sea and the men were gone out of those ships and they were washing them there. In this day, fishing was a primary industry. It's like going to work, earning a paycheck. That's how we get paid. But the Bible says that these men were washing them there. Had doctor ships had begun to wash them. Jesus comes to the situation and he tells the disciples what's going on here and Peter Peter rose up and he said Lord we have toiled all night and have caught nothing we have toiled all night Lord and we, we didn't catch anything in other words we were trying to live right and there was no benefits in it and we were trying to do the right thing we sold we gave seeds we paid our tithes and yet still there's nothing how many of us like you took, you've done your best and they get nothing from you how many feel like that that your best wasn't good enough lift your hands and say lord i tried, lord, I tried. Woo, my god you tried all night and caught nothing you tried to be a good husband, Reggie. You tried to be a good father. You tried to be a good pastor. Lord, I told you all night. Call nothing. You tried to be a business owner. You tried, you tried your best. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I tried. I tried, God. I tried. I gave up gambling. I gave up smoking. I gave up drinking. I gave up people, places, and things. I called nothing. I called nothing. I called nothing. I was a good wife. I called 
wife think of him. I loved him. I, I done everything I know to do for him. And yet he still cheated in it. And he still ran the streets in it. I couldn't get him back, Lord. I tried. I tried, Lord. I tried to submit. I tried. I tried, God. I tried. I tried to be faithful. I did. I tried. I tried. I tried. God bless him. Nothing. I call nothing. And then Jesus says, launch out into the deep. Launching out into the deep, it means that you're not deep enough. You're hanging around shallow people. You're hanging around shallow people. And you're hanging around shallow places. And you're hanging around people shallow minded. God said, launch out into the I'm calling you deeper. Calling you deeper. Launch out, launch out, launch out, launch out to the deeper things of God. Launch out, launch out, launch out. You, 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 I need you to be obedient right here because some of you are comfortable with shallow things and you're comfortable with shallow relationships. You're comfortable. Again. I know, I know you don't like to be pushed and when you get pushed, you, you clap back. Yes, you do. You don't know my heart. You don't know how many nights I cried. I tried to be saved. I tried that. Yes, I did. I tried. You don't know how much I sold in that church. You don't know how much I gave to that man. You don't know I tried. But the Bible says that they are shaking in the heavens. Not that God is nervous. Not that he's nervous, but he's shaking things. And there's a lot of stuff that's going to fall out of your life. It's going to fall out of your life. Now listen, listen. Peter is talking to the Lord. And he said, Lord, Lord, I told all night. I caught nothing. I caught nothing. I tried. I, I tried. And, 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 and I could see that the men seemed to be in Seemed to be in Cleaning up all the expenses, the overhead. Wonder how they this one. They're telling it up at the end of the day, and they say we caught nothing, and it's over. It's over. I caught nothing. It's over. Let's wash our hands. And some people in their seat right now, I want you to hear that. There are people right here in this place right now. You're washing your nets. You're still smiling, but you're washing. Your nets. You're still playing, but you're watching your net. You're preaching, but you're watching your net. You're launching business, and you're creative, and you've got so many concepts and ideas, but you are washing your nets. You're giving up. You're quitting. You're throwing in the towel. You say, Lord, I've done all I can, and there's no more to do, Lord. There's no more to do. I can't. I can't go no further than this because I quit. I failed. I gave up. I've done all I know to do. I've done all I know to do for him. I'm washing. That's why I love Jesus. He will come right in the midst of your pity party. He will come right in the midst of your storm. He will come right in the midst of you giving up, quitting, thinking that it's over. It's not over. It's not over. I got good news. It is not over. It's not over until God says it's over. He quit. Watch me. And he's launch out. It's in the deep. In other words, do it again. Trust me again. I know you don't want to lose. I know you don't want to fail. And I know you got way too much invested. And you don't want to, you don't want to seem like a failure. But the Lord said, do it again. Trust me again. Trust me again. They begin to dock the boats and they go out to where Jesus was. And when they went out, I could imagine them saying to themselves, it ain't gonna work. We were just there. I was, I was there. I was living. Holy. I kept my legs closed, my zipper up. I sold out. I, I didn't talk about people. I didn't smoke, cuss, chew, or hang around them that do. I was doing right. I'm not going back to that. 
Catch me on the flip side, Jesus. I was loving my enemy. Yes, I was. I was doing good to them that despitefully used me. Yes, I was. I was I was charitable and I was showing people love while they dogged me out. Now I want the smoke. Because you didn't know who I was before I got saved. Bring that on now. Now God say, no! Launch out! Do it again. Trust me again. Trust me again. I love you, Jesus. I trust you, Lord. He said, this time, when you get in the boat, to the cast your net on the right side. Do you hear the Lord? Those of you who came in, he said, cast your net on the right side. And you were on the wrong side. <laughs> oh, oh, that's good news. That's good news. Hallelujah. That's good news because what I was doing, I was just doing it on the wrong side. I was doing it right. It was just for the wrong, wrong side. He said, but don't y'all catch that revelation? Do it again, but this time do it right for the right reasons. Uh -huh. Launch that business, but this time do it for the right reasons. Uh huh. When you get remarried, I want you for the right reasons. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you go into the service, do it for the right reasons. Huh? Yeah. For the right reasons. For the right reasons. And the Bible. They took in a multitude of fishes. A multitude of fishes. Jesus. That their nets break. Come on. Give it up, boy. He's gonna give you back what you give it up for. He's gonna give you back what you give it up for. The Bible says that they're dead. The Bible says. Then the net break broke. Now, watching the nets could be so many different things. My post on my life. It could also mean quitting. It, it could also mean giving up. But those of you who that really trust the Lord, watch the shift. Those of you who really trust him, it's not about quitting. It's just preparing for what's to come. Hey! hey. Slap yes, your sir. neighbor high five and say, neighbor! Amen. I said, watch the ship. Watch the ship. Yes. Watch the ship. Don't quit. Something is about to happen. Hey! It's about to happen. I said, put on your name and say, name. It's not over. Hey, just hit me. Woo. Until God. It's over. Not over. Not this way. Oh, 
goofy. I'm done. It will always be like this. Tell you to launch back out into the deep. He's telling you to launch back out to the deep. You may need to, reded may need to rededicate your life to the Lord. And I'm not going to embarrass you by asking you to come to the altar and make the spectacle of you. But I need every head bowed, every eye closed. Come on. I need your head bowed and eyes closed. Don't look up no matter what. If you know right now that things are not right between you and God, or you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to shoot that hand up in the air and put it back down real quick. Come on. One, two, three. Put it up in the air. Come on there. I see that hand. I see that hand. Come on. Is there someone else? It's turning. It's turning. It's turning around for me. Now oh, I got to launch out into the deep. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm going to pray for that one soul. Come on, let's clap. Clap open your eyes. There's one person in here that want to rededicate their life to the Lord or don't know Jesus as their personal Savior. Come on, clap those hands and give God praise that somebody is not going to hell. Come on. Hallelujah. Say this with me. Say, Lord, I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. I want to be saved, God. I don't know if I'll be perfect. I don't know how to follow you and keep all the rules. But I do want a relationship with you. Come into my heart, Lord. Save me. And it's just as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Now you ask him for strength just to live. Don't follow the rules like you see all these religious people because you're going to go crazy trying to keep them all. All you got to do is say every day, wake up and say, Lord, strengthen me. I just want to be right, Lord. And just go about your day, live your life, and leave it up to God to give you the strength. It's turning, yeah. Last time, say it's turning around for me. Whoa, whoa. Won't it do it? Late in the midnight. It's turning. It's turning around for us. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> now make this personal and say it's just turning around for me. Not for my family. I need God to do something for me. Right, Matthew? Do something for me, God. It's turning around. Thanks to God. It is offering time. Let's, amen. Let's remember that uh, we're going somewhere and we do want to be charitable in those gifts. I want to, I want to, before the summer next year, I want to put a full court basketball fence, it fenced out with speakers in there. I want the community to come over here and shoot basketball. I ain't talking about one of the raggedy looking things. I'm talking about with some nice breakaway rims that look good. And uh, the asphalt is painted. Praise God. Look good. I see a vision to reach out into the community. There's some things I want to do here. But you know what? You can't do them with nickels and quarters. Amen. 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 I, that's the, uh, we can do it, but I will probably on a walker by the time I see it. So I just need you to, amen, remember that and so, and as you give your tithes and offerings, so into the vision, so into what we're doing here because, amen, you can already see that we're active in the community. Yes. Very. Very active in community. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, what you want is giving us an opportunity, praise God, to be in the community and know people and get to know them. Amen. Amen. Y'all look familiar. Y'all been here before? First time here? Your first time? Your first time? How y'all find out about us? You mean? Well, praise God. I hope I hope I didn't scare them, Jalen. I was trying to behave around visitors. They tell me, you don't let don't let the Hulk out, because the Hulk, the Hulk may do some stuff, you know. Amen. But praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Still waiting on the boom boom room. In the boom boom room ready. I'm waiting for my invitation, praise God. Hallelujah, amen. I'm going to get with some of the brothers and sh cut up and show out. Beat y'all in with spades and bowling because can't none of y'all, you know, dice or something. And don't even put the PlayStation on because I don't even want to hurt nobody's feelings up in here. And don't, don't break out no dance contest because that's what I used to do back in the day. <laughs> Boy, I used to put them together, boy. I had a combo that wouldn't wait. Amen. Hallelujah. That goes for all y'all old heads and young heads. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all, I'm going to get me a tattoo. Is all right if Pastor get a tattoo? Yes, go ahead. I'm going to get it like Mike Tyson right here on the side of my face. <laughs> what? Y'all said it was okay. Amen. You can't see it yet? I'm going to get the whole thing. Like, you know, I'm going to get me some earrings. No earrings. To me, I want a pink mohawk going through here with some boots with spikes. And I come to the pool and say, No, no pink, no pink. No. Okay. <laughs> well, y'all better give me an offering then because that's how I'm going to make my money. Amen. Being in the shaking club. Amen. Keep the church lights on. Come on, stand with me. Check a little bit. Come on. Come on. Come on. Bring the tithe and offer. Come on. Y'all say it. Y'all, hey, listen. When y'all was in the club, y'all know y'all dance a little bit. Let me see your best move. Come on. We're going home. 